Greetings. It's teardown time again. In fact, it's teardown and fix time. This, well, this is a cardboard box. What we've got inside is a well on VP390 universal uh, programmer, programming various uh, logic and flash and EPROMs. And uh, <clears throat> the reason I've got it open today is because it's not working. Um, I think the software tried to update itself and then um, said it couldn't find the device and to disconnect and to reconnect it. Well, it was already reconnected, so I disconnected it. Yada yada yada, and it's not working. So I've been in touch with the suppliers, and they've given me some um, instructions to try. And um, the instructions involve taking it apart. Well, if the if the manufacturers are going to give me permission to open it up, then I'm not arguing with that. Anyway, in the box we've got. A warranty card which may have come from the supplier or it may have come from the factory I'll show you why in a sec um, we have the VP390 programmer itself which has USB and optional power connection it doesn't always need the power connection but um, if you're running it for long periods of time or apparently if you're running off a laptop it's best to use that as well and one Fairly hefty, I think it's a 48 pin actually, um, zip socket on the uh, on the front. Uh, not much on the back, it's just the label with the serial number and the, the power input and C mark and don't chuck me in the bin sticker. And uh, that's all there is to see with this one. There's no display on this one because this actually uses uh, it's, uh, uses software to uh, to control it. Um, it comes with a, a disc with with software for, uh, for Windows 7 and I think Vista, oh, XP and Vista as well. And I think the newer version probably supports Windows 8 if you're unlucky enough to have that in your machine. Uh, what else we got? Well, we've got this 9 volt 0 0.6 amp power supply. Uh, no idea what the quality is of, uh, of this power supply. I've not used it. Um, I've already got a 9 volt 0 0.6 amp power supply made by Philips, so I use that instead. Uh, so it comes with that. I can't remember if it came with one of those nasty um, travel adapters, you know, the dangerous ones. But if I wanted to use this, it'll fit a standard shaver adapter. Also in the box, we've got a user manual. Um, I can't remember whether this is English or Chinglish because um, I'm not sure if I've actually read the manual. <laughs> so um, it looks from first glance it's actually uh, proper English by the looks of it. So there's the manual, there's one of these little mini discs which I can't use in my MacBook because it leaked it. Um, but you can download the software online anyway. And there's also this. Um, warranty card which is why I don't know if I assume this one came from the supplier because we got this one from the, the manufacturer so that's all that's in the box um, I don't think it came with the USB lead I can't remember but I you know it's a standard USB uh, cable so plenty of those lying around now the problem with it at the moment is that it's completely dead as you can see if I plug it in we get no power lights on the front and Windows will try to install a device driver and fail. Uh, normally I'd expect a light on here. Um, we tried uh, various things and then I contacted um, well on themselves and they team viewed into my machine and did exactly the same things. And then they sent me um, some instructions to try. As you can see, step one, open the cover. So, without further ado, let's put that, um, bad actually, Japanese beer, to one side. And let's take this apart. Ooh, a bit of sparkies be cursing me using a neon test screwdriver for this. There we go. Underneath the feet, we have standard Phillips screwdriver bit um, screws I must say that 
I contacted Wellon and they were very quick to respond, as in within a matter of hours they uh, they got on the case. So there's no um, there's no hanging around with them. They do seem quite eager to to get things sorted, which uh, and you can't fault that really. If you can fault the thing managing to fault itself. So four screws out and there's the back and there's the guts. Let's uh, put the lever up. There we go. It's quite um, quite densely packed. There we go. It's just uh, there's nothing else on the on the plastic lid. So let's see what we have here. We've got a detachable board. These are this is pin headed to the lower board. Right there we go. And first thing to show you on here is that the socket is socketed. It's not soldered in. It's actually so that if the socket wears out, instead of having to throw the whole thing away, you can, um, you can basically pry the socket off and put a new socket on and put the whole thing back together again. In fact, you could probably pry the socket off without even taking the thing apart but it'd be easier to do so. Um, top side, there's nothing much to show on here. Let me just zoom in. In fact, there's no components at all on the top side. On the bottom, we've got quite a few diodes, and this has got to be able to provide um, things like programming voltages onto various pins, depending on the, on the size of the chip. So that may be why we've got these um, diodes in place. And there are some chips as well, which are, let's just bring those up to the camera and hopefully it can focus. Hopefully it can focus and read them, because I can't. What's that, 74HC595, is it? I can't, I can't see that. I'll, uh, I'll edit that into the video later on. Um, and we've got the same on the other side. Let's have a close up look at those. And yes, there are four 74HC595 chips on the one side and on the other you have a 74HC595, a 14CCK2T, either that or a 6C595, and yeah, in fact, I think it's a 6C595, there are two of those. So that's the that's the programming board, well, that's the, the dull end, if you like. And then we have the programmer itself. We've got a, a Xilinx Spartan, which is a, an XC3S100E. And I don't know why I was peering in to look at the, uh, at the chip itself. I've got this showing on a 22-inch screen as well, so... There's no real excuse not to be able to read that. And we have an ARM R710 FZ2T6. At least I think that's the part number, because there's other codes down below as well. Um, so that's what we've got there. We've got a few other components on here as well. That is... Hard to make out, hang on. That's an L1117, whatever that is. And we've got uh, a BD139, which looks quite beefy on here, so I assume that's the main voltage regulator circuit there. And obviously the two the two LEDs which stick to the front. Uh, there's a few other smaller chips alongside, which is an LM324, an LM339, and a TLV5620C. And a few other things as well as an MG34063 and I don't know what this is, a 385-25 um, and a few small, you know, there's some lots of you know, smaller transistors and things of like that. And the bottom of the board is uh, nothing at all. Quite, uh, looks quite neatly laid out actually to look at that. Um, 
So that's what's in it. Now we've got to try and fix it. And the fix was step one, open the cover. We've done that. Step two was to find a JP1, which is there. We've got a pair of headers. Well, yeah, in fact, we've got three headers here. There's JP1, JP2, and a big header there, JP3, which I assume might be some sort of um, uh, some sort of JTAG interface, some sort of programming interface. Anyway, let's put this back on before we go any further. And need to find myself a header pin and let me just bend that out slightly so I can get at it. Right, okay. So let's fit the jumper, JP1. And apply the USB connection. This time Windows appears to have found it. It's not grumbling about it this time. So um, I now remove the jumper and launch the Wellon software. Right, okay, the software is launched, so let's Let's exit that and see what happens if this program works correctly. Uh, let's see what happens if I just try running that again. Right, it looks like every time you launch it with the... Uh, oh, in fact, the power light's got the... Um, lights have gone off in it now, which is interesting. So it still knows it's there, but um, the unit itself seems to have gone out. Um, let's have a look. Now this time, I've got a, a green light which I hadn't noticed before. Right, system update OK, switch off programmer, power, and reconnect. Okay. Power off. That's more like it. So it looks like the initial um, sweep when it starts up, that doesn't actually update it. We've got to let it do that update and then just update it anyway. So this is back from the dead by the looks of it. Let me just take out the power lead again. And yep, happy days. So the programmer is now is now working. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you find that uh, useful, not just to see what's inside, but if you've managed to trash one of these, or if you're working at a school, for example, and the students have managed to trash them all with a system update, at least now you know how to fix it. So thank you very much for, for, uh, for watching. I'll see you soon.